Hey guys, GWS here, here to do some midterm election analysis. Um, and, you know, what a roller coaster. At first, it's looking pretty good for Republicans, and then it just tanked from there. Um, at least in the House. In the Senate, it's looking like it was better than expected. Um, so Democrats underperforming in the Senate, about performing as well as expected in the House. Um, you got 221 to 199. This is probably going to end up like um, 225 to 210, something like a 15 seat lead for Democrats, which is definitely a significant lead. Um, and I want to go over what um, both sides did wrong. Um, now you got 51 reporting here, but you got to remember, um, Tester is losing by two points with 80 percent in um, to Rosendale, um, and that is not a good sign. And you still have some outstanding counties with some um, pretty decent sized populations at least in terms of how Montana goes. Um, Montana not exactly the most populous state. You know you got a couple of these counties that aren't even counted but um, you know, you got stuff like Helena and all that. These are mostly counted. But anyhow, the point I'm trying to get at is um, that it's looking like Republicans are going to have a good day. And the Senate analysis is a lot less complicated because if you look at why Democrats lost in the Senate, just look at where they're losing. They're losing in all these middle America states. Even, you know, states that even had, you know, like Missouri, McCaskill losing by six points. Donnelly losing by almost 10, 9.9. .9. Um, and then you have, um, of course, Tennessee. Then you got Missouri. Missouri, they're going to have a special election. They're going to have a runoff. But as you can see here, Hyde, Smith, and McDaniel split the vote. So Hyde, Smith didn't get a majority. So what's going to happen there is you're going to have Hyde, Smith versus Espy. And Espy's going to win that by double, or Hyde Smith, excuse me, is going to win that by double digits. That's not even going to be close. So you're going to have, at the end of the day, you'll have Republicans with um, about 54 seats. Um, and, and that's kind of how it's looking like it's going to go. Because you got 51, and it could even be 55 if... If Republicans hold on to Arizona, McSally's got a 1.2% lead, 72% in, but there's still some left in Maricopa, and Maricopa is um, running even so far. Um, Phoenix, conservative by city standards, but since cities tend to lean liberally, it's kind of a balanced city. Which, by the way, is what I love about Phoenix. Why it's my favorite city in the country. Um, then you got Scott here. Um, basically, it's almost a formality that Scott's probably going to win. There's not really enough vote for him not to win, but they're probably going to see that to the bitter end. Um, and so you're going to have something like 54, 54, 41, or 54, 46, um, 
and basically, he, and here's the message to Democrats um, on the Senate. Um, if you look at the popular vote, I can't find anything that shows it, but if you look on, um, you know, like CNN, MSNBC, Fox, you'll see the popular vote of the Senate, and Democrats are winning the popular vote by millions and millions and millions of votes. And see, what that message is, is simple. It's easy when you're in New York, California, um, and Pennsylvania, you know, Boston, you know, whatever city you want to pick, to stay in your seat, to stay in your city, and campaign to urban issues, um, and ignore middle America. But this is what happens. What happens is you get a critical mass of people supporting the Democratic candidate. That critical mass becomes effectively a mob. So it becomes to the point where right-wing voices can't be heard because they're going to be muzzled by the overwhelming majorities of people who support Democrats because of you know, the violent nature of mobs, left and right wing mobs. And that's how you get these huge margins in blue states. Um, so you look at a city like, a state like New York. New York, Christian Gilbrain, um, almost two million more votes overall. You look at California, one and a half million more votes. Um, Washington, not as large of a margin, but you still have a lot of votes. Um, and again, that message is really, really clear. The message is, is that you got to get out in Trump country and vote. You know, that's, I guess, what we're calling it now. We're calling it Trump country when you get into rural areas. And it's it's disturbing because, you know, not only um, do candidates get it wrong, but you have pollsters who do not model this area very well. Like, you know, well, Stab and all got close at the very end, but you look at um, Howley and you look at Donnelly. Donnelly, like, Indiana was supposed to be a neck-and-neck -neck race. Like, virtually tied. And Braun won that by 10%. And you look at Missouri. Missouri was supposed to be basically tied. You know, 6%. Um, you know, everyone expected Kramer to win that race. And, and Tester. Yeah, if you look at the RCP average, Tester was supposed to win this by five to eight points. But it's looking like Rosendale might win despite not being ahead in any polls. I don't think there's a single poll that put Rosendale ahead of Tester. Yet Tester's losing this by two points with 80% of the vote in. Um, that one actually went toward Democrats there. Nevada's one of those where um, Democrats overperform, but it's one of the few. But the point I'm getting at is start paying attention to Trump country because they matter and it's not just a Senate thing. Those people have to be represented. Let's just look at governor races um, right now. And Republicans have reached the post. They haven't passed the post yet, but 25-21. Um, 
and it's looking like, um, let's see which way the toss-ups are going, um, the ones that haven't been called, let's see, yeah, interesting that Kansas, um, see, Kansas is another one of those things where it's a call for Republicans to wake up and admit that there are issues. It doesn't mean you have to solve them with social programs, but the one thing I think Republicans have done a poor job of is addressing issues, period. Like, just because you're not addressing with social programs doesn't mean you just leave the issue alone. Like, if something is an issue, you at least have to address it. If nothing else, um, you know, put yourself out there and try to fix the thing. Um, so right now, Georgia, um, Kemp is running two points ahead with 99% in. Why they're not calling this, I have no idea. Probably absentee. But the idea that Abrams can get 2% absentee is not likely. Um, I guess it's possible they called Florida. Um, called Ohio. I'm trying to find out where they haven't. Connecticut hasn't been called yet. 99% in. Again, probably waiting for absentee. Um, and so, I guess I'll end with this before I get to the house, before I get to where Republicans went wrong. And Republicans went wrong even worse than Democrats this time, because it didn't have to be this way. Um, and Republicans need to understand their responsibility. And we're going to go ahead and get to it. So first of all, let's look at the House results. Um, 221 to 199, there are 15 seats left. And if you look at what's left, it's these a lot of these California conservative districts like this. Um, that's been called. A lot of these are getting called, but you have three conservative districts here. Um, you know, you got another one here, and then you got, um, so you got four conservative districts that haven't been called, and then you have, well, that's been called, um, and then you got a few scattered throughout the country that have yet to be called. Uh, we're not going to go through them all, um, but... You know, the point I'm getting at is this, is it's not, no matter what happens, even if Demo even if Republicans take 10 of these seats um, and get up to 209, um, it didn't have to be like that. Like, Republicans keeping the House was not a daunting task, and we're gonna look at exactly why. So let's look at CNN exit polls. And then we're going to see exactly what went wrong. No, I don't want that. CNN exit polls. There we go. Okay. So here's CNN exit polls. Um, and it doesn't have popular vote numbers. Um, they said there's a pink wave, first of all. Women or 52% of voters, which is probably underperforming. Um, so it wasn't necessarily that much of a pink wave, as they call it, in the media. But, um, you know, Republican women slightly overrepresented, but then again, they usually do. Usually most women are voters. Um, 
Now you have the typical demographics here. You have, um, let's see, you know, you have the high school dropout, you know, slightly leaning Republican, um, some college slightly leaning Democrat, but I mean, these are going a little bit as expected. Um, associates went to Republicans. And it's actually surprising is that usually you get a bigger split. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, you get your bachelor's and doctorates, but, um, you know, and as usual, you have um, your minority voters. Um, well, this is education and race. If you look at just purely race, which I believe is up here, uh, age by race, here's race. Um, yeah, non-white is, um, you know, I mean, these are even as expected. Um, Latino, that's about, actually, Republicans perform a little bit better than Trump, I believe. Um, let's see, Asians only make up 3%, but um, Republicans kind of underperformed with them. That might be because of the tariffs. Um, we just looked at that. Of course, income is as you would expect as you go up in the income brackets. Um, it tends to become more um, Republican. Um, but, you know, what's interesting is if you look at um, the middle class stuff, um, it did not perform as well as it did with Trump. With Trump, it was... Um, Trump actually won these middle class votes that um, Democrats won this time. Which is interesting, but it, given how much Democrats won by, it's about on par with what you'd expect. Um, then you have party ID, party agenda, and then ideology, not too important. Now that's interesting. Why would they even poll children? <laughs> that's odd. Um, fathers and mothers voted a little bit differently. Um, but fathers, um, they, they voted for a lot of Republicans too. And, you know, it wasn't... You know, as you'll see, this is a little bit of a sign of what's coming to mothers, 16% of the vote, um, 60 to 39, but then again, even men without children, women without children, um, like, it's kind of divided, like, you, you know, you'll, you'll get a more of an indication, I'll have more nuance as you go here, um, I don't really see religion as a big factor, um, you know, this is kind of going as you'd expect. Catholics divided. Protestants, pretty Republican. Um, and then Jews, you got Democrat. Um, how often do you attend religious services? Um, weekly or more, of course, that's to be expected. Um, let's see, first time midterm. Um, that's potentially a sign right there um, where you have most of like you have a lot more of the first time voters than the non first time voters voting Democrat um, some of those are probably young I, I think I kind of connect the dots with that a little bit as we go down. Yeah, here's here's where we could start getting a little bit of nuance. Was your vote for US House today to support Trump opposed Trump or Trump was not a factor? Now, this does show there was an opposition factor to Trump. 
because 94% um, like 38% of people voted to oppose Trump why would you vote Republican to oppose Trump um, that doesn't make sense but you know I mean you even see 26% who voted to support Trump and 33% say Trump was not a factor the plurality voted to oppose Trump you know and that can't be ignored um, and a lot of it could also tie into where I'm about to go as soon as we go with this um, opinion of the parties um, most favor Democrats that's not unexpected um, and then you have opinion of Nancy Pelosi at least that shows people aren't insane <laughs> 56% of people find her unfavorable. Um, well, here's one, too. Let's see. You know, views of Donald Trump as president, 45 to 54. So, you know, among the voters, there's a lot of people who approve of Trump, like a lot of more people than most of the polls are um, showing. And of course, you got wrong track. Um, it's still a wrong track election, though it was un that under Obama too. And most people think we're becoming more divided again. People aren't dumb; they're pretty smart people. Seventy-six percent giving the correct response, and that's one of the few times I'll say that. Um, conclusively and most people decided what they're gonna vote for um, long before and and here it is right here this is what Republicans miss this is what we all missed most important issue facing the country health care 41% 41%. Now, Republicans did a good job of talking about immigration and the economy enough to make it them issues. But health care was barely mentioned by either party in terms of their platforms like most of the platform was either you're anti-Trump if you're a Democrat if you're a Republican you are for the economy economy immigration terrorism three of the Republican bucket issues now think about this like you have healthcare as the dominant issue, yet nobody's talking about it. Who has the plan for healthcare? See, this is where I think people got frustrated with Republicans, and this, you know, what I call the forgotten soccer moms of the country. We say the forgotten man will be forgotten no more. Well, we seem to have been missing the forgotten women of this country and you know these aren't people who are just gonna take that lying down and this is where Republicans lost the house conclusively on health care and um, also Democrats if they weren't so anti-Trump they probably could have increased this from you know like a modest victory where they'll have like a 15 to 20 seat advantage to where they could have had 40 50 seat advantage if Democrats focused on health care um, that would have been the most effective use of their time because if you look at the problems this country faces like 
you know, you have your economic theories, such as do tariffs help or hurt? You know, if you look down on these exit polls, you'll see kind of the nuance of where people are on the issues. It's pretty divided, slightly leaning to the left, but then again, the popular vote's going to slightly lean to the left, so you could pretty much just call those a wash. But, um, you know, it's health care. That is the known problem. Both parties know it's a problem, but yet nobody has done much about it and this is where this is where Trump has dropped the ball and this is where his lack of ability to work with Congress is starting you know really hurt Republicans and you know the bottom line is I mean you can make an excuse of John McCain and all that and, and this isn't all on Trump um, but here's the problem is that if Trump were doing everything that he could do, um, it would have been one thing, but Trump has not put himself on the line. And that especially was true in healthcare. In healthcare, his whole thing was let Paul Ryan draft the policy, let them fight it out in Congress. And then throw him a bill that doesn't work especially like if your party controls Congress you know your goal is as a president you got to stick your neck out there and push for things it, 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 you can't just be sitting at your desk um, you know talking to world leaders and all that you know, going out and playing golf every weekend, and, and, you know, I think Trump has done good for the country, but this is where he has failed, and this is where, this is where they really, really dropped the ball on health care. They did nothing about it. Now, I'm not saying you have to socialize health care. In fact, I'm strongly against it. But you gotta do something. Pretty much after the health care thing flopped, all Trump did was say, oh, remove the mandate. Um, and then that's it. You know, nothing else is done. See, usually, like, when you want to pass something through Congress, um, you'll be, you'll have multiple different bills out there. Why? Because it takes a while for these things to get through committee and then to get to the vote and then get to the floor and then for the issue to come up on the floor and then for all the debate on the floor and then for the vote, right? But here's what happened. It's like they had their one bill. They basically had their Hail Mary. They tried to shove it through with no debate or anything and they couldn't jam it through and that was their only bill because see that's what you normally have you have multiple versions of a bill you'll have like the super right wing version then you'll have the softer version and then you may have like if those two fail you'll have one coming down the pipeline behind it that's just like a feather light, you know, okay, we'll just modify this, this, and this. But Republicans pretty much just said, well, we tried, we did our due diligence. American people don't agree with that. And I think this is the biggest proof of that, what happened here. Um, Condition of national economy. 68% of people think the economy is doing well. 17% think it's doing excellent. 39% of those people voted Democrat regardless. I got over two thirds of people think the economy is doing well. That 
should tell you something right there, that all this um, campaigning on the economy did almost nothing. Because these votes were going to come regardless. Like, if you think the economy's going good, you're going to vote for the people in power that you think made it good. And yeah, majority did, but was it an effective use of their time? when they could have been working on health care, and it just, and of course, you know, this is on Trump, like I said, but this isn't just on Trump, um, because if you look at Republicans in Congress, in the House, specifically, you know, look at the past eight years since 2010, since the Tea Party got in. They got in on opposing Obama and basically trying to create a brick wall to prevent him from getting anything done. And they were able to do that. But see, here's the thing. For the past two years, the situation's changed. You haven't had an Obama. And now you have to govern because you know all three branches controlled by one party you know you gotta do something with it and the sad reality is is that Democrats did nothing or I mean Republicans did nothing they did nothing, or if they didn't do enough, they they didn't want to pass the legislation required. They didn't even try. They basically tried to get by with doing almost nothing. And, and, and that's the thing. Like, there's got to be more competence, basically, more ability to govern. And address things like health care. Like, you know, if Republicans don't get their asses in gear in health care, it's going to get worse in 2020. Because people, you know, that's going to be on the ballot then, too. And it's going to keep being on the ballot till it gets fixed. You know, like, health care is never going to be that great in this country just because of the situation. There's just so many people here. But, you could turn health care into a secondary issue by making it better. Um, and, you know, a lot of these other issues, like, they weren't... Like, yeah, if you think... Um, like, pretty much, if you're a Republican, you probably think trade policies have helped. If you're a Democrat, you think they hurt. Um... You know, they have no impact. That's the more important of the stuff because, like, it shows, you know, where independents kind of we are, or independents kind of are. And, yeah, people think the economy's gotten better over the past couple of years. Um,. And as, you know, people are divided on the tax issue, um, you know, 29% of people, interesting too, because the whole Democrat talking point was all the tax cuts weren't for um, middle class, but 29% of people say they were helped by the tax cut. You know, that's not just the top 1%. So there's that. And as you can see, here's another one. Healthcare in the U.S. needs major changes. Um, now that's interesting. Minor tweaks got heavy Republican, and I don't get that. But yeah, Democrats believe healthcare is a huge problem, and that's why they came out to vote. You know, and as you can see. Um, 
Republicans are not really trusted with health care right now. And that is... Correct. And as you can see, this has nothing to do with Russia. Most people think the Russia stuff is nonsense at this point. They're just dragging it out. You know, that's probably not going to last much longer. Mueller's going to come out with whatever he's got to say. Um, and most people don't like Mueller's handling. So it's like, this isn't. A referendum on Trump in terms of impeachment the biggest thing is people don't like how Trump have ha has handled the issues especially health care like if they would have handled health care better it would have been a lot better of an outcome for Republicans but they didn't get the health care stuff done and they didn't put any effort um, and, you know, Kavanaugh stuff is pretty divided. Um, that's pretty much going to be along party lines. Like, if you're a Republican, you like Kavanaugh. If you're a Democrat, you hate Kavanaugh. You know, that's... Um, most people want to keep Roe versus Wade. Um, but, you know, you'll see a lot of these, but... They aren't really that big of issues. Um, importance of electing racial ethnic minorities. Um, you know, of course, <laughs> Trump wins all that, which, you know, I don't even understand what that is supposed to mean. Like, it depends how much they've it depends how they ask that question I'd be interested to see that okay in the US today um, whites are favored minorities are favored um, no group is favored um, so interestingly the plurality don't think whites are favored. You know, that's an interesting result. But again, a lot of that's going to fall under party lines. So it's like it's not that big of an issue. The more women. See, most people think that sexual harassment's a serious problem. I'd even say Republicans probably think that. And it is a serious problem. I agree. You know, it's definitely something that needs to be addressed, but it's not really a big voting issue. Has government done enough to protect the election? Um... You know, again, like, th th there's some crossover on the no, like, because, you know, Republicans want um, more protections in different ways. Um, you know, most of that's going to be Russia, most of that's going to be you know, voter ID stuff, etc., or illegals. Um, most people aren't that scared of illegitimate votes. Um, gay, bisexual, transgender. Now that's kind of interesting is that C 
see that 74% believe that the extremist stuff is a problem enough to influence votes, but 44% of those are voting Republican. So I think that's kind of a wash because like Republicans are voting for Antifa, Democrats are voting based on like pipe bombers, etc. Now here's an interesting one. The extremist violence, 23% say it was the most important factor. Um, and of those, Democrats got the vote. So, I mean, the media fear-mongering obviously had an impact. If people are going to say it's the most important factor. interesting is that suburbs were dead even. Um, and of course urban areas, 32% um, of the vote, pretty heavily Democrat. Um, and see this is, I mean, I mean this area type was, it kind of explains the problem for Democrats. You know, like, of all the issues, like, basically, they don't address the urban issues. Not only that, but they, they barely think ur rural America is an issue. It's just um, catering to people in cities, campaigning in cities, you know, not even appearing before people in the Midwest. And see, that's a problem, because you, you look at the urban vote, 32%. You know, that's a lot of vote. You know, and it's not that competitive compared to the rural areas, which is, you know, a lot more competitive. But anyhow that's pretty much going through everything I kind of exhausted you know I pretty much want to talk about the health care but I want to go through all the other issues too just to go through um, they don't have Senate exit polls unfortunately sadly but um, let's do one final look at the um, not that but let's look at the live results again. Democrats just picked up one seat. Um, so, you know, the take home is, is that both parties really need to kind of get back to their forgotten voters. Republicans need to appeal to suburban people and they may have to give some concessions on health care or um, you know, here's an idea, actually come up with a policy. A policy that encourages free market principles while maybe giving people some minimal protections, maybe um, improving the efficiency of government programs that regulate this, stuff like that. You know, but you gotta address the issues and I think that's the lesson here for both sides is you know if you look at the Trump referendum it had an impact but it was very limited and it's only going to have an impact in certain areas and it's only going to have an impact if there are other um, forces that are working for you like for example Democrats yeah there was an anti-Trump component but the reality is if Republicans were better on health care, they would have won many more of these swing districts. Because that's what people were coming in and voting on. As they see these drug prices, 
and they see Republicans doing absolutely nothing. They're just sitting on their hands, twiddling their thumbs. You know, and see, health care is a thing, too, not just with people, but businesses. Like, they got to pay the health care. They got to pay for higher premiums for their employees. They got to pay for um, all of this. So it's not just... Um, you know, Joe Blow in his house, you know, worried about how he's going to pay for his insulin. It's businesses, it's everybody. And so, Democrats need to start focusing on rural America again. At least trying to compete there. Republicans... Stop pretending stuff isn't a problem. That is a problem. You know, saying we don't have to do anything to fix it is a lazy man's solution and you're going to lose elections on it. No, you can do stuff that is free market friendly while doing something. While, you know, in the very least, making stuff better for people. You can't just leave something that's broken the way it is when people are screaming at you to fix it and that's the take home for both parties thanks for listening guys god bless